You're right, guys. So I just wanted to um, go over this trade, and I think it's a really, really nice setup. The pair's all right as well from a, a, a pound yen perspective. If it's on your list of uh, trades to take fundamentally, now um, again, the setup really is understanding the level. Yeah. So look at this really, really nice hard in hard out. There would have been. A really nice, um, uh, I say, a really nice or really obvious level um, that traders would be, you know, looking at to the left. Yeah, if you think about it, it's the most like kind of recent, uh, you know, uh, level in history. Yeah, there was definitely uh, buying going on here. So understanding that when prices do come back down to this area here, yeah, traders are going to start to do what? Start to look to potentially, you know buy in and around here what you get is breakout traders start to get involved in this look at that yeah so FOMO starts to occur traders start to get short especially when you consider the recent price action yeah risk off was in the market a bit more and then all of a sudden now look at that lovely so by everybody's stretch of the imagination uh you know and, and uh, looking to the left that level that area has clearly 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 gone you know creating again there are really just three traders in the market so you've got breakout traders you've got retracement traders and you've got level traders right that's it You've got hundreds and possibly thousands of strategies but that the, if you're trading around support and resistance then there's only really three main disciplines and it's and it's that so with that being said let me uh let me uh just uh kind of just put that in in perspective so breakout traders we know for a fact are in their trades yeah we know for a fact they are because that's their strategy so where were they where are they likely to place their stops and again this is an hourly chart there are probably you know some breakout traders on the on, I say probably but there are fifth there are 15 minute five minute um, 30 minute you know 10 minute traders depending on the time frame that they trade but generally you would have traders that are getting involved somewhere in and around here with their stop losses probably either above you know the sensible ones are going to put their stop losses above there they're generally that's probably around about a 95 pip stop so you probably have traders with tighter stops um, in and around here yeah so they're looking for at least you know one to one or at least two to one type trades and uh, prices start to stall right so then you get a bit of a pullback and again as I mentioned you get what's known as the retracement trader so they're trading on the off the underside of that level yeah underside of this level here and you get them the price action really starts to look like it's selling off nice engulfing candle on that on that hourly time frame yeah so more traders and more traders are getting involved placing their stop losses here you know entering in and around this area around here right starts to go in a direction starts to look like it's still going in the direction again engulfing candles you know it might be just a bit of a deeper um deeper level and then all of a sudden it starts to now go against them yeah go against them this is the pain this is the pain involved right if you got in short around here and you're not disciplined right loss aversion bias is a real thing loss aversion bias means that um uh, pain feels worse than gains feels good right um and it's actually a true uh, real psychological uh, uh uh thing right and it displays itself in the market by um uh, uh, traders not being able to accept the loss so what traders generally do um, is they will move their stop losses prices going against them or remove their stop losses altogether but let's just you know um, or not even trade with stop losses basically um, but let's just imagine that you know instead of risking you know one percent for example or two percent or five percent as some traders do which is really um, nonsense but let's just say well not nonsense I shouldn't really say that if you're profitable then fine risk what you want right but um but for, for for someone who's for traders retail traders that are learning and that are not profitable you should no way be risking anywhere you know over over one percent i wouldn't even say one percent i you know tell traders 0.1 percent should be where you should really start from anyways 
you're moving your stop loss all of a sudden instead of risking one percent in your account two percent in your account now you're down you know five ten fifteen percent thing that you you're definitely looking at now is trying to get some pain relief yeah you want the relief and the relief will come when you if prices ever come down to an area where you placed your original stop loss right so the original stop loss placement was somewhere around here somewhere around here etc and if you went short around here thinking that there was going to be you know prices were going to going to continue to the downside yeah you went short here in order to exit your trade you have to buy which is demand yeah which is demand so one of the things you have to always ask yourself at a level is why is it going to be more demand than supply at a certain level so um this is one of the reasons right in in, in around this area not only going to have traders that are caught in this area right and that are begging for uh, for some some sort of pain relief the pain being that you're seeing your unrealized loss get larger and larger potentially blowing your account if prices come down here the first thing they're going to do is exit their trade so that's buying you've got traders who trade support and resistance right an obvious level of support there a bit of resistance there's going to be more buying here as well as um, traders who are fading this area right if you're basically selling up here and you want to take profit somewhere where's the area that you want to take profit at an area where potentially there could be a reversal buying in and around here so you're going to have demand a lot of demand um, in this area now from a fundamental perspective which is what we always should be looking at really and truly again not financial advice at all but british pound um, are really ahead of the japanese yen uh, in terms of um you know the economy um uh, potentially hiking interest rates um, and and the like. So, really and truly, it's just buy trades uh, on this pair if it is a pair that you're interested in. So, where we're at now, right? Some more pain going on as prices make higher highs, higher lows, right? Some more pain, um, which is brilliant. These guys are going to be very, very motivated to want to get out of their trades at this level. This also creates and this is what is known as an intraday demand zone um you know i don't we don't trade demand zones as far as we don't plot demand zones in a way that um you know is taught uh, online um and i say taught online but on youtube etc that is demand that is going to be your demand zone yeah this is going to be your demand zone Right, so in prices, if if prices ever come back down here, and we're in a risk-on environment, remember we have to be in a risk-on environment. If we're in a risk-off environment, then the Japanese yen is just going to strengthen regardless. There's no technical analysis um, setup that's going to stand in the, stand in the way of uh, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and safe haven plays. Doesn't matter how great the set the technical setup is, because at the end of the day, if the market thinks that you know market wants to pile into a safe haven asset due to you know fear uncertainty and doubt as much as there might be a lot of demand here there's going to be more supply because traders are piling in they don't care about the technicals when it comes to um you know protecting their capital yeah they care about protecting their capital they're not thinking to themselves oh i'm going to protect my capital only up until this point no it doesn't work like that they're going to they're going to continue to protect their capital and, f and pile into safe haven uh, risk off uh, um, assets which are which is one of them is the Japanese yen but from a technical analysis perspective if prices ever come back down here right and risk is on and the British pound is still doing decent when it comes to um, you know the, the, the economy inflation um, the central bank isn't you know that hasn't turned really dovish they're still kind of more neutral potentially hawkish and the market believes that they're going to uh, high crates ahead of the Japanese of the Bank of Japan then this for me is actually a really 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 nice trade anyways guys um hope you understand that and um, let's see what happens if prices do come back down here and again as well we could, it, prices could go straight through right nobody knows what's going to happen to price it could cut through like a hot knife through butter we have no idea i'm not saying it's going to reverse around here all i'm saying is, is that if prices come around here and 
you know there's a there's a there's an entry candle that we use there's an entry in your time frame that you that you trade this and you've got good risk rewards you know zoom out look at the you know the daily time frame look at where we are potentially look at the upside potential if you're right about this trade we look at the bank forecasts as well which is found in the bank forecast channel look at the majority of where the banks are forecasting from you know Citibank to Mizuho to ANZ etc if, if they if you can see any uh, bank forecasts on this and then that's really nice so I do really like this from an intraday perspective and uh, yeah that's um, that's a really nice uh, trade setup CPR anyways guys take care and I'll speak to you all soon